seems like for about the last week or so, the Congressional Black Caucus has launched a bit of a war of words towards the Tea Party. They've drawn some, some lines in the sand verbally, as it were, and I wanted to talk about that a little bit today. Um, it all kind of started when Alan West, Colonel Alan West, who is a uh, congressman out of the great state of Florida, made a couple of appearances and talked about the plantation mentality that uh, a lot of the black leaders and, and a lot of the Democratic Party have towards the African American community. And boy, did that set Maxine Waters off. She's another congressperson who uh, is out of California and is one of the leaders of the CBC. And just, if you look at her history, she does not hesitate to play that race card anytime she can. And oh, she was upset with, with Colonel West over this and told him and said to America that in her mind, and I'm quoting directly from her, the Tea Party can go straight to hell. Wow. Then later in the week, Another representative, uh, Frederica Wilson, was at a town hall meeting in Miami. And this was a town hall meeting that was ostensibly supposed to focus on job creation and, and what could be done about the unemployment in the African American community and that kind of thing. And, and Maxine Waters was there, and Jesse Jackson was there on the stage too, because of course he can't resist a TV camera whenever it's around. And Wilson made the following statement. Frederica Wilson said this, and I'm quoting again. Let us all remember who the real enemy is. The real enemy is the Tea Party. The Tea Party holds the Congress hostage. Okay, so we pretty well know how most members of the Congressional Black Caucus feel, don't we? They view the Tea Party as an enemy. They view the Tea Party as working against the interests of the African American community. Okay, I guess that's the playing field that we are that we're playing on here, isn't it? Now. Before I go too much farther with this, I want to refer you back to something that I did a few weeks back, probably seven, eight weeks ago. Back in late June, I, posted, I believe the exact date was June 23rd, I posted a presentation uh, in which we discussed why I believe African Americans should abandon the Democratic Party and the American left. It is episode number 20 of America's Evil Genius. So if you have not seen that episode, if you've not seen that presentation, I would invite you to go back and, and go through that presentation, or maybe after you're through watching this one, go and, and, and review it, because a lot of what we're going to be talking about today kind of builds on what we did in episode number 20. And I think that the comments of Waters and Wilson and all these people uh, kind of add to that discussion that we had back in late June regarding the topic of African Americans and their loyalty to the Democratic Party. So uh, you'll see in the screen here I've put... Uh, the link to the YouTube page where I have all of my videos. If you are watching this on YouTube, if you look down in the description section right now, you will see the hyperlink to the direct video that I'm talking about, AEG number 20. So uh, I would advise you or I would, uh, I would encourage you, if you have not seen that video, go ahead and do it because it discusses some things that we're going to build on here in the next few minutes. So. With the Congressional Black Caucus talking about how the Tea Party is allegedly an enemy of the African American community and how we can go to hell, although it strikes me that considering the district that Maxine Waters is in, if, uh, if we really did want to go to hell, we'd probably have to move into her district, you know what, with all the drug dealing and prostitution and whatnot they have there. But no, that, neither here nor there. The bottom line is they view us as a group of people working against the interests of African Americans. Now, since that's how they view us, since that is their rhetoric, I would like to propose a very simple question. I would like to ask a very simple question. If I had Maxine Waters sitting here, or Frederica Wilson, or Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, even Barack Obama, I would ask this very simple question. I would ask the same question also of any of you out there that are listening right now that, that think or feel that the Tea Party is somehow working against, against the interests of the African American community. Here's a question I would ask. What specifically is it that the Tea Party is doing, or that the Tea Party believes, that is working against the interests of African Americans, or any other Americans for that matter? What specifically is it? Now, if you have an answer to that question, if you think you have a uh, suitable explanation for what it is that we're doing, to impede African Americans, feel free to go ahead and send that in. Here's my e email address right here on the screen. Just shoot that right into the email address. We'll take a look at it. We'll discuss it on the air here in a future episode. But 
That would be the question that I would ask Maxine Waters if she were here or Frederica Wilson or any of these other people. Now the reason I would ask that question is that from my perspective, I don't see what it is that, that we believe or what it is that we're doing that is in direct competition with the African American community. I don't see where the difference is. Consider for a moment the very basics about what most Tea Partiers believe. Let's set aside all the rhetoric for a second, all the name calling, all the cries of racism or whatever else. Let's take just a couple of seconds to discuss exactly what it is that Tea Partiers believe. Tea Partiers by and large believe that people, individual people, have more potential to become successful and to live a good life when left to their own devices, when left to make their own decisions for themselves and to, uh, and to be able to keep the fruits of their labor or to suffer the consequences of bad decision making. We believe in an individual way of doing things. Conversely, we believe that government is usually an impediment towards the success of the individual person. In other words, if you want to put it up and, and tie it up in one, one nice pretty little bow, Tea Partiers generally believe that when human beings make decisions for themselves in their own best interests individually and for their families, that generally speaking they will be better off than if a government entity came in and made those decisions for them. That's what we believe. Now, when you look at it that way, what is it about that type of belief system, belief of an uh, individual approach to life over a collective approach to life, what is it about that belief system or that brand of politics that works against African Americans? On the face of it, I can't see anything that works against them. I mean, it may sound a little simplistic to say it, but the way I look at it, most African Americans that I know are very similar to a lot of the rest of us in terms of what they want out of life and what they want for their families. We all want a life where we're able to put together a better life for our children than we had. And we're all able to, to reap the fruits of our labors. And we're all able to keep what we've earned. African Americans aren't any different in that regard. They want to have a, as good of a life as possible for their family just as we do. There's no difference. We all believe in those things. So I don't see where this big chasm exists between the African American community and anybody else. We're all motivated by the same things. Now the last 50 years or so in America have shown that expansive government is detrimental to the poor, to minorities, to the African-American community among others. And if you go back to episode number 20 of America's Evil Genius, we talk about that in detail. I provide a lot of numbers for you that show how the African-American community was really coming along just prior to the Great Society and Lyndon Johnson, and how the Great Society and all of the government programs aimed at the African-American community after that point really put up a brick wall to the African-American community, and really put an artificial ceiling on their growth. And again, I invite you to review those numbers and take a look at them. They're not my numbers. They're numbers that came from, from people like Thomas Sowell and Wall Street Williams. They did the, the research on that. And I was just a messenger. But I would encourage you to go read some books by Thomas Sowell. Books like Black Rednecks and White Liberals. Or books like Dismantling America. Or Wall Street Williams in a great book called Liberty and the Tyranny of Socialism. Those are books you need to read you need to look at. If you really want to answer this question and take a look at it. But the bottom line is that government has done more to hurt the African-American experience in America in the last 50 years than it has done to help it. And even though the Democratic Party and the American left engineered a tremendous amount of loyalty from the black community, they really have not pay, repaid that loyalty with a better lifestyle for that group of people. They've held them back in my estimation. So in that respect, when you consider that the Tea Party stands for dismantling a lot of the major initiatives of government that have held people down, including African Americans, for the last century, it strikes me that we are on the side of African Americans, and all other Americans for that matter, instead of working against them. I mean, when you think about it, the challenges that a lot of poor African Americans face 
are no different than the challenges a lot of you know people in rural areas face. You know, we talk about how sometimes these social programs of the government have encouraged people to have children out of wedlock and have kids specifically to get another another check. And yeah, we talk a lot of times about how that happens in the inner city. But I'll tell you what, I can take you to uh, just about any small town in rural America here in the Midwest or in the South. And I can show you some white folks that are doing the same exact thing. It's the same destructive behavior pattern. It's the same destructive pattern set up by the federal government. And it affects everybody. So we need to stop pretending that there's some sort of large difference between the wants and the needs of African Americans and everybody else. We all want to be successful. We all want to be allowed to live life on our own terms. We all want to be allowed to keep what we've earned and do for our families what we will. There is no difference. This chasm that supposedly exists between African Americans and conservatives really is not there. And it's people like Maxine Waters and Frederica Wilson, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, and the Democratic Party in general that would like for African Americans to believe that such a chasm exists when indeed it does not in 2011. Now, some of you are listening to this and thinking I'm full of it. Some of you might be African Americans who have followed this type of politics and mentality for a long time and you're thinking I'm completely off my rocker. Hey, I'm just some guy on the internet. But I would encourage you, if, if you are in that position, I would encourage you to do the research on your own. Go read some Thomas Sowell. Go read some Wall Street Williams. Or if you want to, hey, you're on YouTube right now watching me, right? Type Walter E. Williams up in the search bar and just go through some of the videos that come up and listen to them. You can do the same thing with Thomas Sowell. Right there, in 30 seconds, you can, you can start listening to him. And judge for yourself what has happened in America over the last century. Judge for yourself how the influence of government has affected the African American experience. Has it been positive or has it been negative? Look up some websites. Go to a website called www.moveonup.org. Go visit that website. It's a, uh, it's a gathering of, of conservative African Americans. And read some of what is written there. Do yourself the favor of looking at the entire picture. Because I'll tell you right now, despite what you've heard, there is no Jim Crow in the Tea Party. There is no racial qualification for the Tea Party. Heck, we want to grow. So we want African Americans or anybody else to join us so long as they believe in smaller and limited government and so long as they believe in getting America back on the right track and slamming the brakes on this car and turning it around and going full speed in the other direction. Whoever you are, if you believe that, we want to hear from you. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.